Welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rana McBerto Willis, your host. As you know, uh, we're a political show, but you know, politics involves every part of your body. And uh, every so often we do a little change up here. So today we decided to have health educator, Dr. Julie Gatza, AKA Dr. Julie. She's one of the nation's top chiropractic physicians with 30 years of clinical practice during which she assisted many thousands of patients resolve a wide variety of physical ailments using her understanding of the nervous system, nutrition, and alternative therapies, something that I love to hear about. Dr. Gatza, mission with each patient is to enhance their body's potential to heal itself. In these political times, isn't that something that we need? Dr. Julie, welcome to Politics and Right. Thank you for having me on your show. Look, uh, first of all, what is this thing about millennials feel like they are being chased by lions all the time and it's killing them? You see, I have a millennial and I tell you that it's the life that I'm living, watching her in that sort of domain. Tell me a little bit about that, first of all. Well, I have one also, and I do believe that um, I mentioned that in the little write-up because of the fact that we have an adrenal system and the adrenal system is uh, supposed to be set up that sits on top of your kidneys and it's there for the fight and flight. It's when things were really stressful, you're getting chased by the dog on the bicycle and you need to pedal faster. It was for short term, um, tremendous boosts of energy. And when you weren't using it, it had time to recover. Well, what's happening in our society now is we're under tremendous stress, we're under tremendous pressure. The, you know, the world has changed, the finances, everyone has to make a lot of money just to get by. And there's a lot of uh, pressure on everyone really, but these millennials have not really had much downtime on this area. So their adrenal system is overworked and thus that affects their overall health. They're still young, they still have reserves, but they're getting beat up faster than we were at that age. And it will show up shortly unless they start to do some things that are smarter and healthier for the body and maybe even more than what we had to do because our food has changed, our society has changed, our eating habits and our, our things that we think is okay to do. We never did when we grew up and we both know it's not the greatest for these millennials, all the coffee they drink and the weird drinks and the Red Bulls and all these strange things that they're putting into their body to try to make energy instead of um, letting the body relax and make its own. No, I centralize sort of on millennials because that is one of the things that I think you, you, you speak a whole lot about. But in this time of this political angst, this political uh, polarization where, where people are at each other's throat. That is sort of a stressful thing too, isn't it? Something that, you know, uh, on, on, on my program, I try to bring uh, United folks. I try to tell folks, irrespective of folks' ideology, we really need to try to get together to try to calm things down. What, what do you say about that? I say it starts with food. And it, it sounds silly, but it is something we do at least, you know, once a day, most of us three times a day. And when people are hyped up, when they're not sleeping well, when they're eating poorly, they're going to be more reactive. They're going to be more, you know, short fused. They're going to be more willing to, you know, have road rage and weird, you know, things that if they were fed correctly and they had enough sleep, they would probably think twice about, you know, reacting that way to others. So for 30 years that I've been a doctor, I always focus on food and digestion first, because if you can get the good food, you can digest those nutrients, put them into your bloodstream. You're going to be as healthy as you can be because you're going to have an efficient system and you won't be running on empty and then expecting to perform like you're running on full. So, so you really do think that a, a lot of our, a, a lot of the way we are, the anxiety that we have the, and all these things, if we were better fed, we would have better feelings, better, uh, uh, better ways of dealing with people just because we are fed better. I, I've seen it for so many times. I can't tell you. I didn't even know that this was this true, but I have patients that come in who, you know, have anxiety, they're depressed, they're quick tempered, they're short fused. And when we correct their diet, everybody, including them around them says, wow they are so much better. I can't believe it. They're really, you know, all the better definitions and adjectives that you want to use for them, but 
they're calmer, they're sleeping better, they're not so irritable, they're, you know, nicer, and they like themselves, they're not so weepy. And uh, the fact is, it really does come from, are we missing a tremendous amount of nutrients in our diets, which absolutely we are. Why are we now more unhealthy than we used to be? Let's just say 20 years ago, we have an upswing on so many diseases. And it's because we haven't put the focus, we haven't taught our children um, way from, you know, kindergarten and fifth grade and high school, how to, you know, select good foods, prepare good foods, serve good foods, eat good foods. Instead, we've allowed it to go roughshod and you know, fast food is everywhere and it's expected and people don't know how to cook the way that our grandparents did and we were taught. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's, it's gone in the way of we aren't fed nutrients. So we are um, being affected our health wise and our mental state. Now you've kind of centralized on a, a teen, I mean, a, a millennials and I think teenagers, how do their systems really differ from anybody else's? And, you know, right now as it is, a lot of folks, uh, if you if you take a look at the commercials on TV and the ads on TV right now, it seems like they're always selling something for your gastric system, right? That's right. That's right. I mean, I've put the most attention on the di digestive system because I found that if you corrected the digestive system, you could handle a lot of the chronic problems. I, I'm a chiropractor, so you would think, well, what the heck is a chiropractor doing correcting people's digestion? Isn't that just a bone person? But let's say somebody comes in with a chronic neck problem. They've been everywhere. They've taken everything. When we correct their system digestively, we make sure that they're making enough enzymes. They're taking enzymes to break down their foods. It gets rid of the inflammation in the body. So if you're adjusting their neck, their neck now starts to hold. People with migraines, you know, all over the Olympics last night, I saw commercials for migraines and I thought, oh my goodness, they just haven't seen me. And the fact is <laughs> they needed to correct the digestive system, eat the right foods, get the correct enzymes in, um, adjust the spine. And, uh, you know, there's barely been a migraine I haven't seen that we haven't been able to correct. Now, that's just saying because I've got a nice formula, it works for so many other things in people's lives. And the difference between millennials is this is the time now that they should be storing nutrition. This is the time that they should have a vault full of reserves. And those reserves will help them in stressful times. Those reserves will help as they get older and uh, they're missing out on correct and putting the reserves in. So when they turn 30 and 35 and 40 and they wonder why they feel not so great and they you know, are having a hard time, it's because now was the time that they should have been you know, sort of storing up for winter to say, so to speak. Well, and, and what is, uh, what would you consider um, a good diet anyway? I'm just curious about that because I know the people that are listening to me say, okay, Gberto, since you brought on somebody on, on food and all that kind of stuff, all right, just tell us what we should be eating. Okay. So uh, one, I, I want to mention the fact that you can have a good diet, but if you can't break down those foods it really becomes sort of a, a silly game because you can put all the best food in, but you have to be able to have the enzymes to break it down. I've seen over 90% of the patients that come into my office are missing the adequate amount of digestive enzymes just to break down the food that they're putting on their plate. So that means they're already behind the eight ball and they're not getting the nutrients into the bloodstream. And the only way we can ever be healthy is with nutrition. You can't lay in a bathtub of vitamins and expect to be healthy. You can only get it from what you can put into the body, the quality of it, and then how do you absorb it? So with that, I've been giving high quality digestive enzymes for 30 years of being a doctor. The one that I use right now is Absorbade. So I put them on Absorbade for each meal so that they can get the most bang for their buck every time they're eating. So what should they eat? They should first and foremost, not skip meals and they should be eating protein whether that's in the form of eggs, meat, fish, chicken, I don't care what form you wanna eat that protein, um, but that is the most complicated of the foods. It's the one that the cells need the most. It's the one that the body really, really um, performs well. And uh, that's the first food that should be going in. Second should be steamed green vegetables. And then everything else comes after that. So a lot of people are eating a lot of carbohydrates. They're having a cup of coffee and a bagel on the way out of the house. They're feeding their kid a bowl of cereal and expecting them to perform well in school and be smart and get along with others and not space out and not be surly or upset. And the fact is we're not getting 
giving our kids enough protein. And we're allowing these fast foods to be thrown at them. And um, it's easy and convenient and it certainly fills us up, but it does not have nutrients. So now how do we perform in a day when we don't have nutrition? We have to go to our reserves. Well, what if you don't have reserves? Now you're you know, a weepy, um, surly mess and you know now your kid has learning problems and the fact is well of course they do but it's not from what you think it's from the adequate nutrition that they should be getting in the first place our grandparents got it i have a little time left but i you, you kind of tickled me someone to go a tiny bit over here question um usually we hear about eating vegetables first more greens etc cetera, etc cetera. are you reversing that by saying no we need more protein by weight than vegetables and starches? And also, um, or can we replace animal protein with a combination of uh, plant protein? Your, 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 your thoughts on that? Well, there's many countries in this world that don't eat animals and a lot of vegans and vegetarians that are very healthy and do it right, but they do it right. They don't eat pasta for breakfast and lunch and dinner and bread and we in America aren't very aren't taught very well how to be vegans and vegetarians. So we rely on the carbohydrates. And of course, I've seen patient after patient not be super healthy that are eating that way. So I don't care how you get that protein, but you do have to do it correctly. If you are going to do it without animals, then you need to soak your beans for a day or two. That breaks down the outside tissue and allows you to absorb it better. And that is the proper way to prepare beans and legumes, but we aren't taught that. We just open up the can and call it, you know, a bean day. And uh, the fact is, yes, I think protein is more important than anything because I've seen a lot of patients over the years that say, I hate vegetables, I'm sick. And I say, all right. And they say, well, I don't know how to get better without eating vegetables. And I said, well, you do need to eat protein, knock out these things, take these nutrients, get the enzymes in, and you will get the most you can from the things that you are eating. So everyone needs more vegetables. Nobody's eating enough of them. So I don't mean to put that down, but the first thing that goes on the plate should be um, the steak, the chicken, the fish, the meat of any kind and eggs. Eggs are a perfect food. It comes in its own container. You can make it hard boiled. There's a million ways to do it. You can hide the taste if you don't like them. And it's an, a perfect food that goes into the body and allows you to have the energy and make the, the energy you're supposed to. And when you're talking about eggs, you're not necessarily just talking egg whites. You're talking about the full egg. The full egg. It's a full, it's perfect. Now, eggs have cholesterol, but the cholesterol is not the thing that causes high cholesterol in our bodies. Our, our bodies make 80% of the cholesterol that, that we have. 20% of it is just from diet. So I have seen so many people with tremendous high cholesterol eating eggs, eliminating the other things that were barraging their system as far as just bad choices. And they could eat as many eggs as they want and their cholesterol came down, 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 down. So it wasn't the eggs. It's just a lot of times people with high cholesterol do have poor diets. So, you know, if they're eating crappy, sorry, if they're eating poorly overall, you want to clean up the whole system and not just eliminate eggs because they have cholesterol in them. Well, I think, Dr. Julie, we got a, a good synopsis, a tiny, tiny synopsis of um, eating right and what, you know, how to make your diet a little bit healthier, how to make your diet politically healthier as well. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, I tell you what, why don't you tell us how uh, folks can reach you, have a chat with you, maybe see what you're all about to see if what you have to, uh, you know, if, if, they, if they can see it through your eyes. Certainly, there's a website that they can uh, get onto, which is called naturessources.com. And they can read about the absorb aid. They can read about the different forms it comes in. There's lots of information there. There's the importance of enzymes can't be stressed. It's not, it's not something you're gonna see on commercials. Instead, you're gonna see how to fix your digestive problems or how to get rid of the symptoms. You're gonna see a million different drugs for a million different things. But if you actually, get the nutrition from your food by taking something like the Absorbid, you're going to get the most that you possibly can. Dr. Julie Gatz, also known as simply Dr. Julie. Thank you so kindly <laughs> for having been on Politics Done Right. I think, I think our viewers have a little bit better interest in their digestive tract right now. I'm happy. That's my purpose. <laughs> Thank you. 
we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.